In this video, I'm going to show you eight great ways that PMF therapy can help to regenerate your body. Hello, this is Bryant Myers, author of PMF, The Fifth Element of Health. I have spent 25 years and three quarters of a million dollars researching energy medicine, and I do feel that PMF therapy is the crown jewel, the best of the best of all of energy medicine. And in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you one of the reasons why, because PMF therapy can help to regenerate your body. That's right, I'm not talking about just symptomatic relief, I am talking about true healing, true regeneration. So if you have any kind of injury, long-standing or recent, or anything that's just not healing, whether it's chronic structural damage, whether it's back pain, hip problems, knee problems, shoulder issues, or maybe it's something with internal organs or some kind of disease, PMF therapy can help. So PMF therapy is part of electrotherapy or energy medicine. And like I said, I feel it's the best modality within all of electrotherapy. But interestingly, electrotherapy goes back to the 1800s when they actually use probes to help to heal fractures in London. So a lot of people don't realize that energy medicine was being used in the late 1800s and early 1900s. And it wasn't until the Flexner Report in 1910 that electrotherapy fell into disfavor. And then big pharma, big medicine kind of ruled up until the 60s and 70s with drugs, surgery, x-rays, antibiotics, vaccines, etc. So in the 1960s, there was a resurgence led by Robert O. Becker, Andrew Bassett, and others. And Robert O. Becker's landmark book, The Body Electric, was really at the forefront of rejuvenizing electrotherapy and energy medicine. And Robert Becker was intrigued that bones could heal, but yet other tissues seemed to just form scar tissue. So he went on a long journey to investigate regeneration and healing. And one of his main forms of research was studying the salamander because salamanders do regenerate. Where frogs, which are closely related to salamanders in, in evolution, cannot. Meaning if you cut off a limb of a salamander, it will regrow, where if you cut off a limb of a frog, it won't. So what's the difference and why can't frogs regenerate and why can't we regenerate like salamanders can? Well, that's the question Robert O. Becker really was intrigued with and he did a lot of good research to show the reason why. So it's important to note that salamanders do have a similar anatomy to humans in the number of bones, muscles, nerves, and the overall basic arrangement. And they can regenerate a whole eye, a whole limb, half their brain, half their heart. I mean, it's amazing what salamanders can do to regenerate. I mean, you can literally poke an eye out of a salamander and it'll grow an eye back. So what, what Becker did was he surgically amputated salamanders and frogs and he measured the voltage on the stump. You know, after it kind of healed over, you can measure the current or the voltage. And what he found was summarized in this chart here. And this is really the whole key to how PMF therapy and energy medicine is so effective at healing and regeneration. So here we have amputation. So once the arm was cut off, there was an immediate drop in voltage. So again, keep in mind, positive voltage is a lack of energy. Remember, electrons are negatively charged and electrons are the carriers of energy. So our cells ideally should be in a negative voltage when they're highly energized. So there was an initial drop in voltage and then with both the frog and the salamander that happened. So then gradually over time, the voltage started to rise, but it rised a lot faster with salamanders. And, and what's interesting is that there was a polarity reversal where the voltage went way up to minus 30 millivolts, where the frog did not get such a, a change in voltage, meaning there was a surge of energy into the salamander's stump. And it was this energy that Robert Becker found is what really stimulated regeneration. So Becker wondered if, an, if a current was supplied to the frog stump, what would happen? I mean, could we stimulate regeneration in the frog with giving it more energy like the salamander is naturally able to do? And what he found was that he, when he supplied a low frequency and low intensity current, the frog's arm regenerated just like the salamander. That was the key. Healing is voltage. Healing is giving the cells more energy to divide, differentiate into creating new cells. I mean, this is huge. I don't know why medical textbooks don't have a whole chapter on this. I mean, this is like the secret to regeneration is in voltage, giving the cells more energy. And that's exactly what PMF therapy does, as we'll see. So down here, we can kind of see the stump regrowing. And what happens is a layer of stem cells will form over the amputated stump. And the added energy supplied by the salamander then causes those stem cells to differentiate into healthy adult cells that make the bones, muscles, blood vessels, nerves, etc. 
So Becker did a further study where he looked at red blood cells of frogs. And what he found was that when he added a very small current, the frog cells de-differentiated into stem cells. And this goes against biological dogma that says that differentiation is a one-way street. Once our cells divide and become liver cells, skin cells, heart cells, etc., they can't go back to the totipotent stem cells. Becker was finding that's not the case at all. Our cells can actually go backwards into totipotent stem cells, meaning we can create stem cells with added energy and voltage. But here's an interesting aside where more is not better. Frederick Brown, one of the students at Becker, found that when you lowered the current to stimulate regeneration, the dedifferentiation creating more stem cells increased. And see, Becker thought that going in that a higher intensity current would cause more stem cell production, but it wasn't the case at all. In fact, when they went down to one billionth of an ampere, almost by accident, they got the maximum dedifferentiation into totipotent stem cells, proving that more is not better in microcurrent therapy and PMF. In 1961, in an orthopedic convention in New York, Becker was talking about these very topics. And Andrew Bassett was in the audience listening, and he came up to Becker afterwards and asked him a lot of questions. They started to collaborate because he was an orthopedic surgeon and has similar interests in regenerating bone, which is where a lot of the original research was shown with regeneration to stimulate bone regeneration. But eventually, Bassett went in a different direction with Pilla, and instead of using electrodes on the tissues, Bassett found that you could create the same kind of microcurrents non-invasively with PEMF. And one of his original devices for bone stimulation, which is st still to this day being used for non-union bone fractures, he found that by using coils, you can induce a current in the bone that then stimulated regeneration in the same way that adding a current to a frog's limb helped the frog to regenerate a limb. But the nice thing about PMF versus microcurrent therapy is number one, there's no impedance. There's no blocking of the signal. It goes all the way through and covers the whole volume and penetrates really down to the bone marrow. Number two, it's using the body's own natural charges instead of adding electricity to the body, which can cause microelectrocutions. So it's just a much safer, better, faster approach to healing at a deeper level than electrocurrent therapy is. But again, electrocurrent therapy does work. It's just Andrew Bassett was finding a better solution with PMF. And this little chart here kind of summarizes it. So here we have a voltage source, and this is kind of like you could say like tissue in the body. So when you add the voltage to the electrodes, a current is induced in the tissue, which will stimulate regeneration. But instead of using electrodes, PMF is using a coil non-invasively, and from this coil, a changing magnetic field through Faraday's law will induce the same current in the tissue. So we can induce current with a changing magnetic field because a changing magnetic field will induce a voltage. So just like you've got a voltage supplying the current here, a changing magnetic field will induce an EMF, electromotive force, which has units of voltage, and that electromotive force will drive currents in the tissue, and those currents will stimulate healing and regeneration. So by all of Andrew Bassett's research on how PMF can stimulate regeneration in bone, the FDA granted approval to this bone stimulating device in 1979 for non union bone fractures, that is fractures that never healed. Some fractures that were not even healing up to 40 years were healing with PMF therapy. In fact, if you go to an orthopedic surgeon and you have a non-union fracture, that orthopedic surgeon very well may prescribe a PMF device to help you to stimulate healing. And just as a further aside, osteoporosis is also benefited from PMF therapy by the same mechanism. It's the same electrical stimulation that stimulates the osteoblast to create bone matter and to help to increase bone density over time. It, now, it might take time, but I really feel that PMF therapy is a must for anybody with bone density issues because the consequences can be just too crippling if you end up with a hip fracture or a vertebrae fracture or some kind of serious break in any of your bones in your body because they just won't heal right. So now I wanna go through the eight ways that PMF can help to regenerate your body. But first, let me just use this little metaphor here. So here we have like a water fountain. We've all seen beautiful water fountains. And if you look at it from a distance, it has a, a specific form to it. And you might just say, well, look at that beautiful shape. But when you get up closer to the water fountain, you can see the water moving and flowing. So like the water fountain, which kind of has this geometry, we have like a holographic blueprint of perfect health, a biofield, an aura, a, what's called a subtle organizing energy field or a morphogenetic field as Rupert Sheldrick calls it. So this holographic blueprint is guiding the regeneration process. What PMF therapy does is it gives the body energy so that the body can heal itself. 
So I'm not saying that PMF therapy heals your body or treats any disease. What I'm saying is that PMF therapy gives your cells, tissues and organs and body energy so that your body can use the information in the blueprint to create healing and regeneration. Now we can't regenerate a whole arm, but I'll put a picture on the screen here. We can regenerate like the tip of our finger. And there's been some cases of some pretty serious type of injuries that PMF therapy has helped to regenerate at least a small amount of tissue. And the eight reasons I'm gonna go through here are all the proven mechanisms that PMF therapy can help to regenerate your body. And in a way, it is kind of like the fountain of youth. I mean, certainly it's one of the main anti-aging tools that you can utilize. So let's look at these eight ways that are proven to help the body with regeneration. So first and foremost, PMF therapy helps by increasing cellular voltage. There was a study done in 2001 that showed that PMF therapy stimulates the enzymes in the sodium potassium pump to stimulate the voltage across the cell membrane because our cells have a positive charge on the outside and a negative charge on the inside. And this is called the transmembrane potential. And it's this voltage where energy is primarily stored in the body. And as I've talked about in other videos, it's one of the main reasons that we stay healthy where as our voltage drops, we end up with things like chronic fatigue and ultimately down to cancer when our cell voltage drops really low. So what PMF therapy is doing is it's stimulating the sodium potassium pump and helping with charge separation to increase cellular voltage directly. Now, along with voltage, PMF therapy, there's many studies to show how PMF therapy stimulates the mitochondria and increases ATP synthesis in the mitochondria and the cells. And it also helps with ATPase activity to release the energy stored in that high energy phosphate bond in the ATP. So, so PMF goes both ways to help with ATP synthesis and then with the release of the energy to do work in the cells. And again, as we saw with the salamander, it's all about voltage and, and current. And so this increase of ATP and this increase of cellular voltage gives the cells more energy to divide because I didn't mention this, but damaged cells need twice the energy to regenerate as normal cells. So we need to give the cells more energy so that voltage swings up like a salamander and then those healing currents will stimulate the stem cells to be created and then differentiate into the tissue for real healing and regeneration. I tell people PMF truly heals the body. It's not just symptomatic relief. So the third thing is, as I just mentioned, PMF therapy helps to stimulate microcurrents within the meridians, the nerves, and within the body. And like I said, these microcurrents then will go and stimulate new bone, new cartilage, new tissue, whatever is needed. It's that energy delivered to that injured area that's gonna stimulate the regeneration. The next thing that PMF therapy helps with as far as regeneration is microcirculation. And again, many studies showing that PMF increases nitric oxide to widen the blood vessels. It helps to dissipate the Rouleau effect so that the blood flows more easily and it even lowers the surface tension of the blood so that it's, it's like wetter. The blood is, is not as sticky and like maybe maple syrup. So all these properties of microcirculation are going to allow oxygen and nutrients to get into that area and then deliver all the waste products out. So the next thing is detox. So again, like I talked about in my last video, to create new cells, we need both energy and space. So to regenerate tissue, we first have to break down and get rid of all the debris from the injury, clear it out, right? Clear out all the rubble, like a construction site, you know, we're clearing everything out so that way we can rebuild. So PMF, well, through microcirculation is one way, but also even at the cell level, PMF is stimulating electroparesis and that's making the cells more porous, kind of like opening up all the doors and windows of your house. It just kind of airs out the cells and allows the cells to release all those toxins and of course also to bring in the nutrients. But at a larger scale, it's helping to stimulate liver enzymes and different antioxidant pathways that will then help to detoxify and get rid of all this toxic debris so that the body that can then use the energy to rebuild. The next thing PMF does is, as I've talked about before, is it increases stem cells. Again, the one study done by Dr. Goodwin with NASA showed that PMF therapy increased neural stem cell production up to 400% using a low intensity, low frequency square wave. Again, more is not better. But again, through this added energy, as we saw with the salamander, that de-differentiation of cells into totipotent stem cells, it's those stem cells that can then be programmed to become the new tissue for regeneration. And PMF does both. It helps with creating the stem cells, helping them to divide and proliferate, and it helps them to differentiate into the tissue that, that they need to become for regeneration. Now, the next thing is really fascinating. It's PMF therapy increases immunity and especially macrophages. Now, I didn't mention this, but there was a study done in Australia where they found another mechanism how salamanders regenerate. And what they found it was through macrophage activity. 
In fact, when they removed the macrophages from the salamanders, they wouldn't regenerate their limbs. So it seems that, that the immune system, especially the macrophages, are an integral part of regeneration. In fact, there was a study done by Casa Risa in 1993 that showed that PMF therapy increased IL-1, interleukin-1, which has been proven and shown that it stimulates macrophage production. So, and there's other studies as well, but definitely PMF therapy has been research proven to increase immunity and even specifically macrophages, which has definitely been and linked to regeneration with salamanders. And lastly, here we have anti-inflammation or anti-inflammatory. PMF therapy, there's many studies to show how PMF is anti-inflammatory. It's been proven that inflammation slows down repair and healing. There was a study done by Kumar, Kumar, and Kalavani where they showed that PMF therapy very significantly decreased inflammation and increased repair. So again, the anti-inflammatory effects of PMF therapy is definitely one of the keys to how PMF helps the body to heal itself and to regenerate. So I just want to conclude by saying that it seems for some reason, and you can see it going from salamanders to frogs, that evolution seems to have turned off our ability to regenerate entire limbs or like radical types of regeneration. But I'm here to tell you that PMF therapy can turn on what evolution has turned off. And the key is voltage. The key is stimulating the energy at the cell level and helping those cells to divide and create new tissue. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do subscribe to my channel. I have many more videos coming and leave some comments. And if you have a long-standing injury, really look into a low-frequency, low-intensity PMF device because it really is one of the best tools of wellness that you can have to stimulate healing and regeneration. So thanks again and have a great rest of your day.